Hello you amazing hackers, I hope you're all go doing good today. Uh, today I would like to give you guys some information about Burp Suite. I have the professional version myself, but I'll be going over the free, ver uh, the free version features as well. And I'll be explicitly mentioning when a pro version is involved and when a free version is involved. That way you guys don't have to wonder which is which. Um, so the first thing I would like to mention is that I opened a project, so I have um, saved my project and that's a pro feature. Uh, that's one of the biggest reasons I would advise you guys to get this uh, Burp Pro, because you can save your projects. That saves me a hell of a lot of time. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you, um, I want to set my target, so I want to set my scope properly, because when I'm attacking a target, I don't want to go out of scope. So I'm going to open my target tab and I'm going to open my scope tab within that target tab. Now as you can see there is an include in scope and an exclude in scope. In the include in scope you're going to add your target. Now I always use advanced scope control. The difference is when I don't use advanced scope control I can only add a prefix. So I can add a specific URL that I want to match. However when I use the advanced scope control I can include a, an, a regular expression. So I can include, for example, right now I have the ferret shop. The ferret shop, there we go. And I'm going to include this in my include in scope section. Now there's also an exclude in scope section. So specific things I really don't want to test, for example, Google. Um, for example, there are some advertisements on my page and I really don't want to test those, so I'm going to exclude any Google request. That way my scope is set properly. So when my scope is set properly, I'm going to move on to my proxy tab and I'm going to set my options properly. So as you can see here, there is um, a specific IP address that this is running on, an interface and a port number. This is a proxy at the moment, so burp proxy, the name says it all, it's set up as a proxy. So what you have to do is you go to your Firefox instance that you have open and you go to http double, double, point, uh, double point slash burp and here you can see that you land on the burp homepage. Of course if you allow traffic to go through, so I'm going to refresh this page for now and as you can see I land on the homepage. And in the top right you can see that I have a CA certificate. Now what you're going to have to do is download this specific certificate and either open it with your keychain if you're on Mac or save the file and then you go to your preferences in Firefox and then you view the certificates so you search for certificates, you view them and then you import that specific certificate. Now that certificate is already in my keychain so I don't have to import it anymore, but this is really important if you want to catch HTTPS traffic as well. Because HTTPS traffic, as you know, is encrypted and it has to be decrypted somehow. So that's how why Burp has to insert its own CA certificate. So when all of this is said and done, when my target is set properly, when uh, I have my certificate imported, I still need to set my proxy in Firefox. So I do that in my settings, in the network connections. And you set it to the IP address that you set in the, pro in the that you saw in your options. Now, if you already have something running on port 8080, you can of course edit the specific port that is running on the proxy. And then of course you also have to edit it in your Firefox settings. Now, when all of that is said and done, we can start testing. So as you can see, our proxy tab is lighting up orange, and so is the intercept tab in the proxy tab. And as you can see, the intercept is on at the moment. What you want to do, as you can see, I tried going to the URL specifically ferryshop.herokuapp.com, but nothing's happening, and that's because proxy, burp proxy, is intercepting the traffic. So if anything uh, comes, if any request comes from Firefox, it goes through this tab first, and I can forward it, drop it, or do any other action on it. Now in this case, I want to put my intercept off and as you can see it's going to take a little while but the ferret shop will load up so that's for the uh, proxy tab um, now the next thing I wanted to show you guys is 
on the dashboard you can see that there are uh, live passive crawls and live audits from the proxy. Now what that means is when you open the target tab again and you open the sitemap, of course we have to wait a little while for our website to load. There we go, it's populating. Now when this happens you can see on the dashboard this is specifically a pro feature that there are scans happening in the background. So for example, you can see some of the errors that are generated is that the strict trend for security is not enforced, um, that cacheable HTTPS responses have been found. This is all indications of issues that could arise on the website, but these do not necessarily indicate a vulnerability. For example, these with the I are all on info level. You also have low vulnerabilities issues found. You also have medium and high vulnerabilities. Now some of these vulnerabilities come from extensions which I'll go over later but once again this is a pro version and what this will do is it will populate the first job live passive crawl from proxy will populate your sitemap in the target uh, tab and the second uh, job that's going on will try to find vulnerabilities in all the requests you make while you test. So while I have my shop open if I do any requests, it will specifically try to do uh, look for vulnerabilities. So that's it for the dashboard tab. Um, we can do other things, but I'm going to be making a separate video about new scans and new live tasks because there are a lot of options you can set. For example, authenticated versus unauthenticated live uh, crawls. But we'll be going over those in a new video. Now a next, another thing I want to show you is when I have my proxy open and I go to my history, you can see that I've made a few requests. For example here I made a get request uh, search equals uh, where Q equals nothing. Now say for example I want to change something in this request. As you can see when I type something in here, nothing changes. That's because I have to right click and send this request to the repeater. Now the repeater tab will light up orange because a new thing has been entered in here. And I can start doing some changes to my request and I can uh, press send and as you can see that way I uh, I made some changes to my request and they got uh, a response from the server. Now sometimes a 302 redirect will be put up and you can just um, follow that redirect by a new button that comes up here. Now say for example I do a few of these requests I can always press the back button and the forward button to switch between those requests or just press the arrow button next to the buttons to get a specific request. So that's pretty much it for the repeater tab. Here you can try all kinds of things. For example, you can try a cross-site scripting attack vector. See what that does. You can try all kinds of things and see um, what comes out, you can try a single quote in here for SQL injection. If I can type my single quote properly, of course. There we go. So that's what you can do in the repeater tab. Now we're going to move on to the intruder tab. Let's say, for example, I right click on my request again and I send this to the intruder. Now, as you can see, it opens on the target tab, but I can also open the positions tab and here you can see that it automatically clicked on some uh, some of these positions, some of these parameters. This is also a pro version by the way, a pro version feature, the intruder tab. So you guys will have to shell out some money if you want to use this. Um, what I usually do is clear this and only specifically mark the parameter I want to attack. So I'm going to add it in here. Now there are different types of attack styles, for example sniper will try the same value and every single parameter that you try. Do you have the pitchfork which will try different values for different parameters. There are a few of these, I'll put the manual in the description below as well. Feel free to check it out. Now when I have marked my position I will also need to define a payload of course. So um, the Burp Pro has a few simple lists that I can choose from. Oh right, the intruder um, I think it's also available in the free version, but you can only do so many requests per minute and you don't have the lists. The lists are also only in the pro version. So the lists, for example, include some fuzzing quick, fuzzing full, 
um, SQL injection fuzzing, cross-site scripting, many different things that you can try here. So we'll try, for example, SQL injection, and then you can start your attack. Um, the attack we try, oh, because, of course, when I set my attack type, I set it to Pitchfork. I'm going to need it to Sniper and start my attack. And as you can see, a new window will pop open, and you can try to see what responses you got from each request. And a few powerful things in this window, you can, for example, sort by length. If a lot of the requests have the same length, but a few of them don't, that means something might be up. Maybe you can find some SQL injection this way. Um, if the status codes change, you can try that. You can try filtering on error. Uh, you can try doing a lot of things in this uh, specific intruder tab. So, now that we're done with that, we'll also go with the sequencer. The sequencer will have its own separate video because this uh, is specifically made for analysis of tokens. You can try um, seeing if a token is random enough. So, for example, session tokens might be generated, but if they are not random enough, you can start guessing those session tokens and you can do an account takeover. This specific sequencer tab will help you with that. There's also, of course, uh, a decoder tab. This is uh, speaking for itself. You can decode text as something, base 46 to something. Um, or you can encode it, or you can make a hash out of it. It's pretty much whatever you want. You can also try smart decoding, but that doesn't always work, of course, because it tries to recognize which type of encoding you have, and it tries to decode it that way. Now there's also a comparer, if you have two different requests and a response and you want to see the difference, you can send it to the comparer and you can see what the differences are. Um, next thing I want to go over is the extender. So as you can see I have a few of these options enabled, I'll go over a few of them as well. What I want to tell you guys is don't use too many extensions at the same time, your uh, random access memory will be eaten up alive. I can tell from experience, I've had a few of these open and it didn't end too well. But of course, use the ones that you think are appropriate for the project and then just save your project and reopen it if you have the pro version. It's really useful. Um, that's why, why I said in the beginning that just saving your project only is worth buying the pro version for. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is um, Authorize tab. I have, a new, I have a video out that shows you how to automate either, either searching with Authorize, so I will link that in the description. This is, of course, also a pro version feature. The next thing I wanted to show you was CSRF. What this is going to do specifically, and you already saw a glimpse of this in the dashboard tab, is when you go over your site, it's also going to look for CSRF um, errors. For example, requests that do not contain anti-CSRF tokens. Now be careful because um, sometimes the requests do not contain CSRF tokens. But you have to make sure that it's a proper request to a proper endpoint, not like this, for example, the socket IO. Uh, for example, changing a password would be a good one if the old password isn't required because you don't know the old password. Um, and you also have to be careful because there are other ways of beating CSRF. Um, for example, a token in the uh, session in the cookies, that would also be a way. Now, um, the next thing I want to show you is and this will be the last thing. Um, this will be the software vulnerability scanner. Um, what the software vulnerability scanner does is it looks specifically if there are known software versions available. For example, here it has this detected the jQuery is used. It doesn't know exactly which version and it shows that no vulnerabilities have been found because it doesn't know what version it is. Sometimes it does recognize what version you are using and it is able to give you good recommendations but that's not always the case so that's pretty much it I would like to thank you guys for watching um, I hope you guys uh, found this thing useful uh, I'll be making more of these because Burr Pro is an excellent tool in my opinion uh, if you guys found this video useful please leave a like um, a comment would help me a lot as well it helps me with the YouTube algorithm um, and also if you guys subscribed it would help me a lot. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a nice day and I hope we see you, I see you in the next video.